In Excel, it's fairly common to have data set up like this with months across the top as headings and another set of labels down the side. Here we have products and then the sales per month per product on the cells in between. This is a simple example. It's just got one set of labels along the left side, but you might have two or more sets of labels as well. If you try and create a pivot table from this data, you start running into trouble because you've got so many columns with amounts in them and the pivot table will treat each of those as a separate field and it becomes very difficult to work with the data. It doesn't automatically add things up so you lose a lot of the power of the pivot table. To change that we can use a pivot table technique to put this data into a vertical layout instead of horizontal. So instead of having 12 columns of numbers we would have one column with products, one column with month names, and then another column with the amount for that product for that month. And to do that, we're going to use the multiple consolidation ranges type of pivot table. If you're using Excel 2007 or 2010, that command is not on the ribbon. It's in the menu in the older versions of Excel. So if you're using one of the newer versions, you can use a shortcut or add that command to the quick access toolbar. We'll just use the shortcut, which is Alt D and then press P for pivot. So this opens up the pivot table and pivot chart wizard. We're at step one and we want multiple consolidation ranges and click next. We'll just click here to create the page fields. We're not really too worried about them, so we don't want it to create one for us. The next step is selecting the range where the data is. So I'm going to select this entire range with all the headings and the numbers and add that. We just need one range. So I'll click next and we'll put this pivot table on a new worksheet. I clicked finish and there's my pivot table. It really just looks like our original data, but we don't need the rows or the columns. We're only interested in this grand total cell. Now if I double click that, it's going to create a new sheet with all the data from that pivot table. So here are the products one column for months and the amount for each month. I'm going to rename these heading. We'll call this product. This will be month and amount. From this new table, I can create a pivot table that will have all the flexibility that I need. So back to the insert menu, pivot table, and this table that was created was automatically named table one. So we'll go with that, click OK and there's the pivot table, the empty one on the worksheet. We can see that we have our three columns instead of the 13 fields we would have had before. So I'll put in the months down the rows and let's put product into the columns. And then when I check amount, it fills in. Now we have a pivot table that's manageable instead of one that would have a value field for each month and it wouldn't give us grand totals for each row. If we have something that's a little more complex like this one where we have multiple labels at the left hand side, we can concatenate those before using the multiple consolidation ranges technique. So I'm going to put a couple of blank columns in here and call this row and it's a formula so start with equal it'll be this cell and then I have to use a character between these two fields and I'm going to pick something that isn't in my data so I know there isn't a dollar sign so I'll do the ampersand and then quote dollar sign quote another ampersand and then product so when I press enter now, that's combined those two fields. Drag that down to the last row and we'll use this part when using the multiple consolidation ranges. Back to the shortcut, which is Alt D, P, multiple consolidation ranges. I'll create the page fields and I'll select this range of data and add it. Then next on a new worksheet, and finish that. I'm going to uncheck row and column and double click on the value. Now we can see that field we created. I'm going to move it. So I've selected that column. I'm pointing to the border here and I'm right clicking and dragging it 
to the right and then shift right and move. I've moved it to the right because I'm going to split this into two fields and I don't want it to overwrite any of the other data. So with this column selected now on the data menu, I'll click text to columns. It's delimited because I have a character that I want to use to split the data and it's not a tab, it's other and the dollar sign. So now you can see it knows where to split the data and I'll click finish, month, amount, region and product. So I can create a pivot table from this and it has those four fields. So I could put region, I can put product up in the report filters and amount, put that into the values and summarize by sum. And there's our pivot table with all the flexibility that we need.